first game. Stonewall means d4 and e3. I'll go bishop d3. He's not threading e5 just yet, so knight c6 would be a reason to play f4. Knight d7, absolutely a reason to play f4. And I love this move because it blocks the bishop. So I'm already feeling pretty confident. When I see this move, I'm going to play c3. But remember, if he takes, I'm taking with the e pawn always. He goes c4. We've got a square for our bishop. Um, I know that if I stop him from playing knight to e4, then I'm going to have a pretty good position. So knight d2 here. I'm not going to waste any time. Prevent that. Knight to e5. This should be a very, very good stone wall. So let's uh, let's see how it goes. But he can't use this square. And again, guys, that's why I say so important to get that knight in. Because you know what? Honestly, what it is, is that people don't realize until like deep into the game that, oh, this is going to be a serious problem. It's only like right now that they're like, uh, that's a big problem. And then they panic and go 94. But I've already got it covered with these pieces, so we're just we're just better, much better. We still want to get castle. We can still use that e5 square. Knight f6 will of course go back. Save the bishop. And yeah, it's the exact same position, except he's just missing a d pawn. So not too worried here. Yeah, I've been doing that a lot, Zooted. Knight d2 before knight f3, basically just covering that uh, that square there. Okay, let's put our knight on e5. Hits this pawn, and of course we'd love for him to take, so we can take with the f pawn. Open up our rook. e4 is a decent move to get the queen out. In this case, though, I'm looking at bishop h7. Takes, queen check there. Queen takes here, and then some sort of you know, rook f3 to h3. And I think we should be delivering a mate. So that's how quickly. Plus, we already know we're going to get a brilliancy for that, don't we? <laughs> we're going to go here. Take on f7. And when the king goes back to h7, then I think just, or king there, then I think just rook f3 should do the trick. Because if queen h4, we can take this rook with check and then win the queen. We should be crushing here. Stonewall just screams attack. And I think we're able to get it done here. And I mean, am I right or am I right? We're going to get a brilliancy for Bishop H7. So another Stonewall, another brilliancy. Mark it up, put it in the books. It's a good defensive move, probably one of his best. I mean, he is just getting absolutely annihilated um, because he's losing the rook and then the queen. But it's still, I think, probably the best move. Queen takes check and rook f8, trying to go for mate, I think just runs into that. So not much to do except play it cool and take all the material. It'll lead to mate pretty soon. All we need to do is bring the, our other pieces into the game and and he should be in trouble. E4. Move this bishop somewhere. Rook over. He wants to go bishop here. It's a good move, honestly. I'm going to go on here. So that after this, we go here. And I'll just, I'll just get the bishop out. Ready to sacrifice it. I know once my rook ends up here, it's just over. Queen here, rook here, and then rook f1 should be the end of the game. Uh, queen here, rook f1, rook e7. So I'm actually going to go queen g5. So that after this, there's no rook e7.
but it's a good good pattern to know when you have an open f file that you know a lot of us might play queen h5 there and hit f7 hit h7 with a bishop here and a rook there but then black plays g6 and covers both threats so instead it's often better to just sack the bishop go here take and then you have this mating pattern by lifting your rook in most chess positions when you're launching an attack and you have this kind of tactic it'll work out that way And if he takes and goes king f7, he's also made it in two on f8. King f8 maybe the most resilient i don't know not really i take on f7 there i don't think he can do much here even though this game lasted, you know, about 28 moves, um, it was again, bishop takes h7 was on move 15. So it was pretty much a KO in, you know, 15 to 20 moves, which is remarkably standard for the stone wall. Even we're up to like 1200s. I mean, 1200s aren't supposed to be dead lost in 15 moves. He's hitting me with the stall. He's inspired by my username. Wone stall? <laughs> I bet I could prove you wrong. There we go. That was a nice one. Let's check for the brilliancy though. You guys already know it's going to be there. Bishop takes h7 like that. Boom, baby. <laughs> ah, there it is. Double x clan. Yep, it was always going to be brilliancy. So the stone wall is a tough opening, you can imagine, to play with the black pieces against e4. Because I need to play basically like that. And that's a tough thing to set up. But... At least I can go like this and try to get my opponent to take me. He does. And then I can set it up, right? Okay, there haven't been many people who've done this. This is definitely, you know, not the best position to have. But we're going to make a point of trying to keep the uh, pawn on d5 to support in the center so i'm thinking here and then if check just go 94. oh and this is really good for me that's a big big mistake by my opponent so now we might be might be doing quite well Yeah, now we get castled, and again, we've we've kind of achieved the dream stone wall, and look how quickly people blunder. It's like, as soon as that knight gets to e4, I feel like people just don't know what to do. I mean, this is a serious blunder for a 1250. I don't know if you guys think that this is expected or something, but this guy's 1250. Like, it's a very, very, very basic blunder. But people just cannot resist when they're up against the, uh, the stone wall, it seems. take i was thinking about taking here but i'll keep my bishop for the moment i mean these are big blunders 
1250 is hanging a lot of pieces right now. I think this is a conspicuous move. Will he notice this? Damn it. He does. Um, let's actually work around this knight. Bring the knight to e4. We can always eliminate the knight anytime we want. Um, and we're up two pieces here, so this game shouldn't be very close. Even though he might be tempted by this move, I think it's a big mistake. Now I have a lot of targets. Bishop takes e5 as well. I think he's in big trouble here. It was f5, which is objectively probably a good move. Let's bring the queen in. And I may think about sacking here because it gives me a lot of uh, mating opportunities. Takes and takes, though, looks like the intention. We have to be careful of this, but that's about it. A lot of blunders by my opponent. A lot of blunders. But, again, this just goes back to, like, the stone wall just as an opening. Like, C4 by my opponent was a great move here. Uh, it's a really good way to play against what I did here. The stone wall as white, of course, is way more sound. But when you try to force it with black against E4, they can open this diagonal up and it's really strong. So just an example of what white could do to be completely crushing here is like here. Um, takes and knight here, you know? And like, I think just by taking this, I'm going to be down, down and out. Even if I am able to win it back, clearly my opponent is like undermining the center, has the two bishops, already kind of a nice position for white. When you get that stone wall set up, it is really... Usually it's not very long before good things happen. All right, he goes e6. I'm very excited about this. I feel like if I play f4, he might play f5. So I'm hoping that he brings his knight out. So I know that there's no um, f5 move. He goes here. He's actually threatening to go e5. So now I think I have to do this. He goes there anyway. Great news for me. I've talked about this spot before. So now, if I go knight d2, I stop him from going to e4. But then after knight d2, bishop d6, and if I go knight f3, he takes, and I would love to take with the e-pawn as always, but my f-pawn is hanging. The other option is to go knight f3, castle, knight e5, but then he gets knight e4. So the question is, do I want to stop him from getting knight e4? Or do I want to defend my, my pawn? Because knight d2, bishop d6 is a pretty annoying to meet, honestly. He's threatening this, and I really hate capturing this way. Always want to be able to do this. So even though knight d2 is tempting, I kind of have to play knight f3 if I'm playing the opening properly. If he goes bishop e7, then no problem. I go here. There we go. Now we quickly go here, because now if he goes bishop d6 to hit our f-pawn, I can just throw that knight in there. No problem. That's castle. Remember, this move is really bad against the stone wall, because look, that's just simply defended. Let's throw that knight in there. Oh, he takes. This is a great start for me. Yeah, this a5 move is irrelevant. Queen b6 is irrelevant. I want to point out another tactic, which is really common. Takes, takes, and knight takes e5 with the pin against our king. So even though it looks like black's not threatening anything, he has a few ideas up his sleeve. Okay, now that being said, I think we definitely have time for queen g4. That's a, a big enough threat 
I don't think he has time to do any of this. G6 is quite weakening on the dark squares, as you can see. But then we're going to need to defend against this trick. Either by playing king h1 or knight f3 to cover the pawn. Yeah, Zooted, you have the right idea. King h1 is never a bad move. Just to make sure you're not blundering anything. Is it possible to take with a c-pawn? A hundred percent. But we don't want to. <laughs> I'd rather defend this pawn rather than take this way. Because look at my bishop, right? If black takes and I take this way, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. My bishop's still blocked. Now he has access to the b4 square, the open c file. I want to take this way, so I have a huge pawn chain. Bishop opens up. No open c file, no b4 square. It's just 10 times better to take with the e-pawn. So I'd rather make it so that I can take with the e-pawn and maybe even waste some moves rather than have it the other way. We'll go knight f3. Yeah, it goes f5. It's a pretty decent move. As we know, we kind of have to take um, en passant. That's going to be our plan almost every time. I want to get off this diagonal. I know I'm on this diagonal, but I'm also threatening h7. So I think this is okay. Good move by my opponent, though, to play f5. If he didn't do that, I think he was getting attacked. Very bad move by my opponent there. It's always tempting to do this for a moment, but you have to just think about it. Like, take a look at this position, and you're thinking, like, oh, I'm really annoyed by this bishop, so I'm gonna play c4 and attack it. I mean, the guy takes a step back, and guess what? You have all the exact same problems, but now there's no pressure on d4. It helps me a lot. Now I can think about playing e4, lots of stuff, so. You really don't want that. Let's bring a knight in. He's guarding the bishop. And I was going to say he wants to play this move. But I think he's forgetting maybe that rook takes f8 can happen. And if he takes with the bishop, he's not attacking my queen. If he takes with the king, well then he takes h7. And he's in a bit of a pickle. So I am going to win a pawn here. It's not the end of the world for him because... His position is still so, so decent. Like there's no way that I'm gonna get this tactic to work because his knight is just chilling there. So we'll take our, <laughs> you know, woo, we got one pawn. <laughs> <coughs> it's not much. Good move. I'm gonna retreat the knight. I don't want him to take and double my pawns. My next move is here. I wanna bring the rook over. If he goes like that, he's gonna lose the e-pawn. Let's just bring the rook over. And it's possible that knight here, even though I lose that pawn is uh, is quite good because knight f7 is a threat. But I definitely think rook here is safer. This is a move, but I'm happy to give that up. Now I got the center pawns rolling. I think we have a good position. He has two bishops, so my position was looking a little dicey there. Not the easiest to come up with a good move. So I'm happy to give up one pawn in order to get all the center pawns rolling. And once the once you see the pawn start motoring down the board, it's very tough to stop. Now the bishop is free. And start to put some real threats together. Do we push or do we take? I'll push and I'll take with the king, surprisingly. Queen here is an unfortunate blunder. 
that move, I think, has to be played, and then I was just going to keep going. Now, if he goes something like this, or this, then he actually gets mated. This move, my take. Yeah, it's, it's just lost for him now. Queen here, mate. Very hard to make a queen move that doesn't mate yourself. I'm not sure there is one, <laughs> surprisingly. Queen c5 might be the only one. Random bullet tip in case you're ever uh, in a situation where you don't have a lot of time and you need to pre-move a mate like this. Never pre-move queen e8, of course, even though your opponent should technically bring both pieces here. Just pre-move the the last possible one closest to the king they can make. Because if they go queen e8, or like if they had some knight that could go here, your pre-move will cancel if they make a different move. And if they happen to make this move, then it will pre-move made in one. So, always useful. Ah, good game, good game. He played really well. F5 by him was a very good move. Yeah, if he didn't play f5 here, then he was in big trouble. So we have, you know, bishop coming, maybe rook's doubling, knight g5, queen h5, and the pieces are really bad, but f5 was great by him. c4 is always a bad move for black. And then here, I think white is just a bit better. Not much to do. Bishop c6, kind of a blunder. I played really well though. He played really well. But yeah, this was a fairly successful stone wall here. Queen b6 against the stone wall is just utterly useless. Like you're attacking a pawn, which is defended by a piece that I've already told you guys. I usually don't move for like half the game or the whole game or something. So. Queen b6, it's great against the London when the bishop's there, but it doesn't make any sense against the stone wall. All right, you guys know what we're up to. You know, we're gonna try to get him to take. This move is of course more common, um, but we'd like to get him to take if we can. Knight on c3 is good too because there's going to be no uh, c4 coming. Want to stop knight b5. Looked very annoying. And it's, this is also the standard uh, kind of stonewall position. Okay, it's an interesting move. He really doesn't want knight e4. That's fine. I'm threatening the castle. I say threatening, because if I castle and the e-file is still open, I think you could get into some trouble. Alright. Well, for better or for worse, I think you guys know my next move. Queen e8. When we're pinned like this, uh, it gets out of the pin, and it doesn't look like I'm actually threatening anything. So he goes rook e1, but this is exactly what I want. 84. Ah, oh, you didn't expect me to be out of that pin, did you, bud? Tricky move, Queen E8. Always seems to work to get that knight in there. Okay. I don't know what possesses people to take this knight. It's like they're drawn to it. They know they're not supposed to take it. They know it's bad, but they do it anyway. I mean, what? Queen here. So, obviously I can't take, but... I can move this queen, not to h5, because rook takes e4 is an idea, but just to g6. I'm hitting two pieces here, and again, we should win a piece. And another tremendous start for the uh, the Stonewall. Winning a piece, you know, in less than 15 moves. He's in a tough spot already.
H6 is a move, uh, but of course, simply taking the free piece is simple and best. Okay, I am going to throw in h6. Nice little escape square. I'm thinking bishop f5. Like, I'm noticing this, so... I'm a bit apprehensive. Um, queen f7 might be safer. Yeah, maybe queen f7. I do want to trade, though, so... No, I'll play this. Still a bit annoying because bishop f5, you know, I got this loose pawn. But I'm thinking that we have a nice... Uh, here, takes, takes, I'm hoping for takes, knight d7, takes, rook c8, takes, and mate. At the very least, he should take and take on b7. I think taking makes the most sense. He wants to threaten this. That also makes a lot of sense. We can play bishop f4, which is, a, in my opinion, a pretty nice way of dealing with things. We just have to be careful because of this checkmate, although... To be honest, knight d7 does cover things. You know what? I'm committed. I think... I think this will work. I set this trap, I'm gonna call it. I'm sure it will work. I'm sticking to it. Okay. He's, uh, he's not about it. Well, let's be careful of this guy. Rook takes g7. While I don't see it actually working, it's, it's an idea. Very much so. It needs careful calculation. There's bishop f4, but... I'm not sure I want to allow rook e7 at the end of all these lines. You know, if I get one move in, all of a sudden I'm okay. That one move is not easy. I think we just go no fear into the position. We just go no fear. Knight d7 and we say, hey, do your best. I don't think it works. Queen covers a lot of checks. The best he could do is take this. But again, not only does the queen cover checks, covers the knight, covers everything. And the rook only has two open files to work with. I'm going to put my rooks on those two. And I don't think he'll have any threats. This is a hero piece. So now I think we've dealt with the threats. This, there's always that check, which is a bit annoying. I think rookie two is the simplest here. He's still not threatening a single check, so let's make our own threats. This is covered, don't forget. And that can't be covered except by this, which blunders that, so. Surprisingly effective. It looks like our king should be in a lot more trouble, but we're good. Yeah, I don't think there's a way out here for him. Heh, 
<laughs> exactly, Aquila. It it feels like that. Dark squares or lava. Yeah, everywhere he wants to move with this queen is covered. Sadly. Good move, buddy. Really uh came close to finding a way out. Maybe this honestly is the best move. I don't know. I guess technically that's probably better, but after queen takes, he would be mated, so. GG. GG. All right. Got the white pieces here. D4. Um, we've seen this before. It usually means the stone wall is a little trickier to get. Just because D6 is such a common move. In this opening, it's like, you know, kind of the main idea. That one? Huh, it really doesn't seem like the right move at all. My first instinct is knight here, but I don't think we can be that direct. So I am going to start this idea a little bit earlier than usual. Bring it out to h4. If he plays c5, we can go here. Brings the knight in. Let's challenge it. So he doesn't have pieces that can support it, except if he goes there, and that's what we want. Now our knight has access. Yay. Let's bring the bishop out. We'll play c3, and we'll try to get our knight in. So even though, of course, he's got a knight anchored in, uh, we also get one as well. So Takes pawn takes is, uh, once again, not something I'm too interested in here, to be quite honest with you. Let's defend it. Takes, I'm still convinced pawn takes is something we want to avoid. The reason I'm apprehensive about knight e5 is because takes, my knight on uh, d2 is hanging. Which is kind of annoying. So I'm going to bring my bishop back so that I can take this next turn and it doesn't fork me. And then I can slot my knight into, uh, into e5 myself. Hello, Mr. Sir. Kind of a funny looking move, but. Take with the F pawn as usual. He's definitely intending this move, but I don't think it's that scary. In fact, I'm going to play g4 to try to open up this diagonal. e6 actually loses his queen, which is a little unexpected, you know, on the e6. Looks like a normal move, honestly, but doesn't quite work. tell you I tried to tell you get him out of here we got to chase him down Bishop takes he's gonna run away how do we get him back and mate with the rook of course double KO That's another 20 move win. We're in these guys' heads. This game, the only move I really want to highlight was Bishop C2. We just executed a lot of stone wall plans here. Rerouted our bishop, got our queen to e1. I held off on moving the knight in just because I was in a funny position where two pieces, my queen was overworked. So moving the bishop back 
means I can take the knight, I'm not forked anymore, and then I can play knight e5. Because here, although I can't uh, use this square, I'm still gonna go here, here, knight here, queen e2, c3, and if he's still got his pawn there, he's not letting me play knight e5, I'm probably gonna play e4 at that point. I've talked about this. There's no way that they can control e5 and e4 at the same time with the d-pawn. So usually if they're stopping knight e5, they're allowing you to eventually play the move e4 and expand in the center. So that's our plan if they don't allow knight e5. But eventually they play d5 and then our plan was knight e5. We just had to move the bishop back to facilitate it. All right, against e4, we're gonna try to entice our opponent there we go to take oh we always love this move don't we guys that's a check but what the hell i'm just going here anyway now bishop here knight here looks like we're gonna be fine i'm gonna start with the knight though which i usually prefer bishop here and if you check me i'm just gonna stick the knight in and castle Bishop there, I think you guys know my move, queen e8. And, oh, don't they always do it, right? They always go rook e1, not realizing I'm getting out of the pin here. Oops. Now my knight's on e4, where it wants to be. And look, you can go, you can go knight there, that's fine. But it's not really gonna change anything. Queen g6, now I'm hitting this bishop. Of course, it's tempting to take the knight, but that's always going to lose. And quickly, we're going to make sure to play knight there to stop knight to e5. So now he doesn't have this move, and he knows that he can't really take on e4. I think he's in a tough spot. Let's see how he handles it. Knight b3. Pretty good move. I give him a lot of credit for that one. He's still saving the idea of knight e5. One thing I see is that, you know, if I allow him to play knight e5, like if I play knight f6, knight e5 can happen. But if I play queen h5 and that knight has to watch over this bishop, Suddenly the knight can't move, and I don't think this bishop can move either. I'm even looking at g5 now as a way to play against that. Easy thing to remember about the stone wall is that if this pawn ever gets captured, take this way. If anything gets captured here, take with the f pawn. You always want to have this pawn structure and open up this bishop. Okay, another fairly good move by my opponent. I do have this move as a very real possibility. He's actually moved both pieces away from taking the knight. So guess what? The knight is staying on e4. That much we know for sure. I think it's time for g5 here. He can go bishop g3. He's going to lose some material there, but... It's definitely worth it for him. How do I want to take it? I think I want to keep my pieces. I'm looking at f4, but you know, it doesn't actually do that much after bishop h2. His bishop's out of the game, but it's not like I'm winning by force or anything there. I got another knight that can go to e4. So I'm not really concerned about giving the knight up. I win a pawn here, I'm hitting the rook. You might be concerned about this, but knight g5 is bad. And knight e5, I move my queen and it's just being attacked anyway. Okay, so I think I will proceed. Again, knight e5, great looking move. 
Um, I'm just going to move my queen and go from there. Bring that knight in. This bishop is covering f5, right? From c8. That's why we moved our knight out of the way from d7. So, I like our position. Our next move is just going to be knight e4. As I said, knight out of the way. Defends that pawn. These guys never learn, do they? I mean, what, what do you want me to do? They don't learn. We got another one. Oh, and now the pieces are just, it's raining pieces. Knight e4, and with the knight coming into f2, I think it's it's pretty tough. a lot of pieces that's a lot of KOs but again this has been a tremendous stonewall just queen e8 sneaky move getting out of the pin of course they can take this knight and they always should but I I mean it not a lot of people realize you're actually getting out of the pin here they're just like oh yeah I'll go rookie one boom 94 hits them like a truck so they should take and then go rookie one and then I would probably like maybe go rook e6 or maybe just move my queen. Try to bring my other knight to e4. That would be my plan. I have the two bishops. White's maybe a bit better, but um, I think black has good chances there. Made one look for better, guys. You should know that by now. We hit him with the pre-moves. We were going to take all his pieces, promote all our pawns, set up the board five times over. Oh, we would have had a field day. Next game. All right. Next game, knight c6 threatens e5. So we are going to play f4 to stop that. Bishop there. Again, it would be nice if we could keep the light square bishop, but that's not going to be every single game. That move is very strange to me. I'm going to move my knight. It's definitely best, I think, to take it, but... I'm going to leave the bishop there for the moment. Knight d2, I think, uh, I think is a pretty good looking move. Hmm. I think knight d2. Because remember, here... Uh, in some ways, I am actually threatening to take on e4 and go knight to maybe g5, g5 for example. Goes there. I think uh, it's probably time to bring that knight on in. Thanks for the reset. Lost moves. Good to see you, bud. Okay, takes. I have two good ways to take back, in my opinion. Two good ways. And I think I like this one more to play e4 next. Pawn takes is tempting to just cover the e4 square, but... There's something really, really nice about playing the move e4. Knight takes, then the bishop's open, all that good stuff. A 
Let's threaten something that's not too bad to threaten. Me. <laughs> we still want to play C3 in general. If ever pawn takes, we can take with the knight. For now, it looks like queen d7 or queen e7 is necessary. And then I was considering taking on d5 even because queen can't take back. Hmm. I'll take. Knight takes. Uh, I think I'll eventually play just c3 here. Bring the knight e4, c3, bishop out, rook over. I think I have a great position here. Okay, castling should just drop a pawn. It's a rather important pawn, so I am going to take it. I mean, here doesn't seem to do very much. Not only can I grab something with check, but c3 covers the pawn and hits the queen. Our position is solid enough here. We might play one of our only end games, maybe in the entire show, honestly. We really have not had many end games. <laughs> I want to say this is the first one. We're up two pawns, they're central pawns. Like, I can't even remember an end game we played. Stone wall is just so good. We win the game so early that it's not needed. I don't want to see this move ever happen. So I'm going to play this. I'm going to play bishop d2 and we'll play rook f1. b4 is a big time prophylactic move. Even though c5 hangs a pawn, it just kind of disconnects my pawns in the center. Um, whereas this ensures I can just bring the pieces to the f file, no counterplay, and nice and easy. Hey, Maverick villain. It's a chess brought Jim with it. Okay, so maybe he wants to play c5. I think we're going to more or less ignore that. I think there are a few people uh, in here that might be able to speak about the chess bra gym because they're in it or they've tried it before. I can see Chicken Pants and Eddie Barber are here, to name a few. But right now the chess bra gym is, uh, I think, at a pretty good price. It's like 100 bucks a month and there's four classes with Grandmasters or other special guests. I think, you know, you're basically paying 25 bucks class, which is, in my opinion, a steal. Trade off the knight, makes it easier. Going well, this move looks tempting, but I don't want to allow bishop d6, so I'm going to play bishop f4 here. I 
h4. Now e6 looks tempting, but somehow I like the fact that he just basically can't move any pieces here, you know? It's like this bishop is totally trapped. Something feels very nice about this. Good game. Yeah, that was a really depressing position. Basically, none of those pieces moved for how long? So after Long Castle, it's actually remarkable to note that this is move 15. Now, for move 15 onwards, black doesn't move anything except Queen, knight, and pawns. And eventually moves the king. But that's that's remarkable that all three of these pieces just stayed the same. And the game ended on move 31. Okay, we'll take the win though. Back to the opening. This was kind of a weird move. It should be four from our opponent. Kind of made it work. Still got our knight into e5. Still took with the f pawn. Once we take and have these double pawns like that, it's usually nice to play e4. Get rid of the double pawns and also open up this bishop. So, and yeah, this is like, again, the dream stone wall. Open bishop and great pawn chain. Okay. Ready with e6 against e4 and probably d5 against d4. That's always a super helpful move. Now we know we're gonna get f5 in. So the reason bishop d6 after castle is kind of meh um, is because rook e1, knight e4, there's d3 winning a piece. This one, however, is more manageable because now when we castle, um, or sorry, when they castle, I'll also be able to castle. So once again, we'll see if we can get our knight d4. It's pinned right now, which is why that seems damn near impossible. I had to play c6 to guard this pawn because he was actually threatening it. Okay, once again, queen e8. And rook e1 looks very likely. But it always runs into knight e4. Or a different move, knight d2. Same thing, knight e4. Super effective here. Taking with the F pawn. Feels good. Okay, 95, let's say objectively, might not be that bad of a move. It should be a bad move because you're just giving away a clear pawn. But it might not be that bad because if the knight went back, I had queen g6, bishop h3, maybe some like kind of quick mating net stuff. Which I don't think I can do anymore.
is this, the bishop can just reach g3 and everything's okay. So believe it or not, I'm I'm tempted to not win a pawn and go here. Just to have the bishops open. Even though technically the best thing to do is just take the material like this. I'm gonna go knight d7 and see how white reacts. Is king h8 ever needed? King h8's not a bad move. Uh, sometimes when like the rook's on e1 or something and rook takes pawn as a threat, then we would go king h8. For now it's not needed, but it, it could definitely be needed. In general, it's not a bad move. Well, Bishop f4 has been hung a few times by our opponents today and in general, but it always is the case that you're covering the f-file when you capture with the f-pawn on e4, so pretty comfortable for black. Maybe g3, knight e5. It's always an option. Takes. gonna say g3 but no he goes here bishop c5 should be winning here um rook takes doesn't really i don't think it does enough let's go here i mean bishop c5 is also winning but i'm gonna start with bishop g4 Well, the thing is, Latin and Blonde, and I mean this seriously, you, you're not used to the, the opponent having control of the F-file that early in the game. Honestly, like, it's, it's unusual. So I, I think it is catching people off guard. I'm going to go Rook here instead of Bishop C5, which also looks winning. Just because I think Rook F1, Rook F2, and Queen H2 and H1 is mate is very, very likely. And g3, we're ready to sack because bishop c5 is coming. So of course our opponents should be more careful about where they're putting their pieces and obviously bishop f4 is just hanging, but it is unusual to have control of the f-file that early on in the game. So it is catching people off guard. Good move. Good move. We'll pin Rook. Check. 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 GG. Another pretty quick win from the stone wall. These are 1250s, 1300s we're playing. No slouch. I mean, 1250s can play, but once again, we see this idea. Queen E8 to get that knight in E4 is killer. Let's see if we get, okay, we get D4. Let's go for that stone wall setup. Bishop there. Gonna go with this one. Of course, we do want f5, but here we go. Bishop d6, knight f6. Bishop d6, we don't mind the trade. What I do want to avoid, and what I've always said over and over, don't be taking that uh, bishop on f4 because they take with the e pawn. And then they play f3 and they control e4 and e5. And that's not something that's supposed to happen. 
takes. Let's take with the queen. Don't really know why he was in such a rush to take that, but okay. Let's castle. So, he's basically copying my opening, but he's got a worse version of it. Like, it's not as good. Mine is a little bit more natural. If I take, I mean, I'm going to have a fine position, but for the most part, I want to avoid it. I don't mind taking with the knight, but then obviously he takes back and he forks me. So this is not an easy knight to remove. G5 and C5 come to mind because they both try to dislodge this guy. And in general, if I can take here and force him to take back and then put a knight on E4, then when he takes my knight, I take back, I have a pass pawn. But I only have a pass pawn if I get this pawn to move. So I have a few things I'm considering, but G5 is absolutely on the list. Let's just develop our bishop here. Reroute that guy. Play knight d7. We know that knight takes here is just silly. My bishop on d7 is the worst piece in my position, so I'm definitely not afraid of <laughs> him taking it, that's for sure. Queen e7, or sorry, queen e2 is a really strange move. He obviously wants to castle, but I still think it's strange. Okay, so he's ready to uh, take it back. I'm definitely going to move my queen here. What do we want to do? Queen e7, I think. Queen h6 is also a little tempting. I move my queen, I'm maybe intending to play knight f6, but also I want to play bishop here. But I can't do it right now. I'm going to go here. I like both of those moves. And both can actually be prevented by knight takes knight. So I would say that that's probably a good one. Nice move by him. Still intending bishop there. Queen centralized. Yeah, I, I didn't want to centralize my queen because I wanted it here to help me play bishop h5. If my queen was on e7 here, bishop h5 wouldn't even be a dream. Okay, if I go here, he has g4. So the only reason I'm taking this knight is because I know I have a winning tactic here that's going to win material. Okay, yay. D4 looks pretty nice because uh, then the F pawn hangs and then the D pawn hangs after that. Super aggressive move. I'm probably gonna capture. And even though I might be dropping this pawn, I'm just gonna shake up the position here. Tactically, it should always be good for me. Like if he goes here, I'll take don't care about this pawn because I'm not material. So opening the position up is all I want to do. And we go here. E2 check potentially is a threat. Right now, that pawn is simply hanging. Queen g5. Honestly, I have to say, a pretty good move by my opponent. Um, I think pushing makes the most sense, surprisingly.
I almost want to uh I want to get some really nice checkmate finishes. And the reason I say my opponent's move is nice is I don't think I'm able to do them anymore. Because I had some really nice ideas. If he went like Rook here, I was actually ready to sack and play E2. Because there are a lot of checkmates I can get with Rook D1. Um, and my opponent has kind of prevented all the fun here. Because I'm definitely thinking about weird stuff like this. And this looks like the kind of <laughs> boring way out but you know what this is a plus 10 game and you know what plus 10 means we can't mess around that's 1300 on the dot there's something incredibly satisfying about hitting the rating on the dot like just can't mess around when you have that opportunity it is it is truly a uh a privilege well Gotta watch out for that. Maybe we can go Queen D7 and set up the old chess style comp puzzle rush. Queen D2, Queen D1. This is the I could I could sit Valentinian down right here and he would still win the game. There we go. 1300 even. GG. Yeah, 1300's nice. Remember, 1300's are the gatekeepers of chess. <clears throat> I've said that before. No, nobody is stronger than a 1300 on chess.com. And I mean, a 1300 in the five minute pool? Boy, that's where the talent is hiding. So, uh, we got a stone wall here. White actually played pretty decently. Not the best moves, but uh, played against what my ideas were pretty well. <laughs> so, traded early and played f4 to basically mimic my opening. Then brought the knight in, went for... Uh, long castling, which means me playing g5 is not that interesting anymore. And then here, played a really good move, knight f3, so that now, you know, I can't play bishop there because of the knight. And as soon as I threaten this, maybe want to take, then white takes, so I can't do that. Plays knight e5. I thought white played well, probably until this move right here, which is a huge blunder, but for the most part, did play pretty well. And then from here, it was just tactics that decided the game. But we were able to get 1300 with the stone wall. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Wow. Look at you. You made it, didn't you? To the end of another stone wall episode. Well, congratulations. And if you're watching and enjoying, but you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button right now. Also, click that bell to turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. See you in the next episode.